Remember us? <laughs> I'm the pirate. I'm the princess. <laughs> and now we're in paradise. Yes. Just in case you thought we died. <laughs> we didn't. <laughs> so, welcome to our part of the world. Moon schooner still floating. There she is. Let's go check her out, guys. Yeah, let's go check her out. storms since we've been here. They've been exciting and the boat has gotten to about that high at the deck level. So we're getting used to tides and storm surge. Hey I think you got a little dry rot boss. <laughs> hey. This it looks a whole line. lot better than I was you were kind of leading on. It looks great this to me. This is a new board over here from uh, Okay, there's an, a lot of new boards from after our trip because we had some things. We had some storms along the journey. So there's some new boards and new poles and new pole on the back of this one that we had not seen yet. Right this there. one got taken out in a tornado. No kidding. <laughs> but she's repairable. It's all good. Arr. Come on aboard. You can come aboard. <laughs> you know, once we got to this marina, it had been a while since we did spring cleaning. I took everything out and everything's not back yet. I think people understand. I mean, just, you know, recap just, you know, a one minute synopsis of what you guys, how far you've come with this boat. Anyone that like, you know, maybe hasn't seen the first one and they're going to go back after this and watch it. What did you guys do? Come out here and do that. Yeah. <laughs> well, that synopsis, uh, I'll tell you, we left Grand Haven, Michigan. We come down the intercoastal waterway. We got the, you know, Mississippi, up to Ohio, that sort of thing. Then once we were coming to Florida and getting across the Gulf of Mexico, we were headed to Tampa Bay. We got to Crystal River and fell in love. It was everything you could ever want. The water was crystal clear. Manatees the size of Buicks swimming through the front of the boat. I'm yet to see one. Uh, and look how close the boat is to the water. You could sit here on the front and put your feet in the water and the manatees would come right up underneath your feet. You, you, you've had that the happen. The dolphins huh? would yeah. come up under your feet. Yeah, we got videos. I, yeah. We got videos still to come yeah. at the Pirate and the Princess. Oh, yeah. You guys, so once, I, I'll, probably many times we'll say this in the video, just go and link in the description and go to the Pirate and the Princess channel and start yeah, watching their once, videos. Once we get there and you start seeing the dolphins, she's sitting out front while I'm driving and they're swimming right under her feet. Mm. And, and the boat's so low, everybody's like, Oh, aren't you afraid to have your boat so low? It was so cool crossing the Gulf and having the dolphins and everything. We've seen a sea turtle once yeah. um, and a stingray once. But it is a totally different experience than like a trawler where you're up on, way off the water. And, right, right, yeah. right, right. You know. Yeah. But uh, if you're on the roof when you're cruising, you can see down in the water a lot better. You know, so the trawlers and everybody see a little better. But when you're down here, the dolphins will look at you. They <laughs> eyeball you. You know, be an ex-Marine Corps. Don't eyeball me, man. Uh, you getting eyeballed by dolphins? Getting yeah. eyeballed by dolphins. It's much happier. Yeah, they're, they're happy eyeballs. I was building a boat in my driveway. My dad really didn't care, didn't believe it or something. He really never did want to see the boat. And I got it built the first year. And then the second year, I, so I spent three months building the structure, made sure it would float and do everything. The second year, I finished the inside. Once I got the inside done, this hung on my mom and dad's hallway for, I don't know, 30 years or something, since 1977. And uh, I'd built the boat in 2000, so do the math, 23 years or whatever it ended up being. And this was my dad's painting. My mom comes in, she sees the inside of the boat, and she says, uh, uh, come and get that painting. It'll look right, good right there on that wall. I'm like, my dad ain't going to give me that painting. Are you kidding? That's his favorite thing in all the world. He ain't giving me that painting. Oh, just come and get it. He can shut up. You know, that was mom. And uh, so I go over there and uh, dad, mom said I could have your painting go in the houseboat. And he's like, you ain't getting my painting. What are you talking about? You ain't getting my painting away. You nuts. And that was the whole conversation. I went, no, never mind. It's done. I, sorry. I knew that you didn't want to get rid of it. Mom just said, come and get it. 
So about a week later, before we ever floated the boat with the whole interior, Dad comes over and he sees the inside of the boat and he's like, come and get the painting. <laughs> It'll look good right there. And that was how that ended up getting there. See, you were, you were talking about how you guys just recently got this slip for the for the boat. Right. Hey, that's right. a crazy story. So the boat stayed out on the hook <laughs> Sorry. Put stuff away. for two years. And there's only two marinas in the area that would even accept a boat, much less a houseboat. But people don't like to rent the houseboats because they're afraid they're going to get some derelict person there. You know, it's going to come in, squat, leave their boat. Not I don't pay, know, not pay, yeah. or, you know, have the place looking junky, let whatever. It, let it sink. What's that? that let be. it sink. Let yeah. it sink. That's you, you, our next video, or the, the latest video we put out, you can see the boats that have sank, yeah. you know, and the houseboats that are underwater. Yeah. And they were worried about that. Everybody's worried about that. From here to Key West, they're worried about that. So we were trying to get a, a place for two years. Yeah, we'll put you on our list. Never get on the list. Call them back up. Yeah, we're not on or you're not on our list. We don't have a list. And all these different things, you know. But then, after the boat sat there for two years, some guy, the right guy was listening, the manager of this marina that we're at right now. Uh, kudos to Travis. But he heard the phone conversation saying, yeah, there's a houseboat that wants to come in. And they've been out on the hook for two years. And he said, have them send pictures. So we sent pictures, and the next morning they called us and said, yeah, come on in. You're welcome. So then we met the guy, and he's like, yeah, I've admired your boat for two years sitting out there <laughs> wishing it was in our marina. Oh, wow. You know? He says, what's your intentions? Are you going to live aboard? Live aboard forever? What are you going to do? I said, no, nah, I just want a place to party on the weekends. Bring it in, whatever it takes, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, we might stay on it for a couple of weeks. We might not. Yeah. I don't know. But once we said that, and it was on its own power. Had to be on its own power. You can't tow it in. Once it was on its own power, they were like, yeah, come on in. You know? And so if we finally got a spot after two years where we can make the repairs necessary, get her looking like the, the good ship again, you know? So we come from Michigan to beautiful Florida, and Michigan, we're on Lake Michigan, where there's no tidal waters. Once we get down here and we've got to tie up, the boat moves up and down every day. And then the wind blows a little, it and it goes this way and that way. So you learn about spring lines. You start tying spring lines. But I just started to make a stupid mistake because I had my lines tied for high tide. And believe it or not, look at that dock. My pontoon has hit all the way up here on this dock. So the deck was even higher than that. Wow. You can do some damage to a boat that way, that. right? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. And that's why these boats are there. So you learn how to tie front, back, side to side, spring lines, all that stuff. Well, then you come out and the boat's right in the middle where it's supposed to be. And you're like, oh, that rope's too loose. But if you tighten it up like I just did, then at high tide, it'll pull it tight and it'll ruin your boat. And at low tide, it'll rip your cleat out because it's sitting right down on bottom. So you got to loosen it back up a little bit and let that go. Mm. And you don't want to bang it against the boards over here. And I ain't going to tell it's you It's a why. lot of work. It's I mean, a lot it, of work. It, it, Learning the difference, though, between the high tide, low tide. And then at the end of the month like this, or the new month and the new you moon. you got to watch the tides all the time, it sounds like. Yeah, like, you got to watch them all. Every day we look at our tide charts just to make sure the boat's okay. <laughs> and it ain't grueling or anything like that. But, like right now, you get a low, low tide right here at this dock. This water, it'll sit right on the bottom. The nose will be sitting right here in the mud. It'll go at a low, low three, tide. four foot below what it is now. At the beginning of the season, or the beginning of the month. And every month, it's like that. And then you get a high tide, king tide. When well, the moon no. is fullest. When the moon is fullest, you get the king tide. Yeah. And on the king tide, it'll ride. Four foot wow. higher than what Where it is you got to step down on the deck. <laughs> yeah. So that's why the extra boards on our poles. You know, why can't we get NASA to do something about that moon? It's just causing us all sorts of trouble. <laughs> Careful, because they might try it. <laughs> okay. They could screw up a good... <laughs> Never mind. Come on, Wavy. You want to go off on the roof for a minute? All right. We're going on the roof with Wavy. Come on, girl. Come on. You got this. Here she goes. Go. Up, up. Go. Go, go. Come on, go. Go, go, go. 
You got it. Go. You got it. Oh, now you want my help. Okay, go. Go. You got it. You got it. Go. When we were coming down the coastline of Florida, and we came from Caravelle into Steen Hatchie, and we bumped down to Cedar Key, we started to see a palm tree or two. But when we got here, the palm trees, I know, like, I know just on this trip, when I finally got to Alabama or something, I saw some palm trees. I'm like, yeah. oh. Here, they're everywhere. They're everywhere. When we came into Crystal River, I'm like, this is amazing. Because God planted those palm trees. Oh, yeah. And There's they're not huge. not a, like, landscaper that put them in a perfect little row. That's right. No, they're here. They're and natural they're, palm trees. They're naturally here. I love it. Me too. I love the palm trees. And to set this light up, all around light for being on the hook. So you had to have an all-around light, and I got a, it's the law that it can be seen for two miles if you're hot on the hook. Okay. Right? So that's the law, even though there wasn't two miles around me. And I had the, uh, you know, the $20 solar light at the top of the flagpole. <laughs> and then uh, had to have this one because that one don't qualify because you can't see it for two miles. <laughs> but you can see that just as well as you can see this. You were talking about the, the decking you used when you built the boat? Yeah, when I built the boat. I built the, you know, I mean, I used treated lumber for the whole lower half. When I built my walls, I actually used, um, for the bottom sill plate, I used treated wood. And two by, they didn't sell the uh, treated wood in two by twos. I'm sorry, two by three, which is what I used. So I cut them down, I ripped them down to two by three, and then I built the walls up with just regular cheap two by three timbers. Which made it, I mean, the whole boat weighs 8,000 pounds. That's incredible to it's me. It's 14 foot wide, 32 foot long, all wood with five pontoons underneath. And it's incredible. Yeah, it, six it, foot it, six it, ceilings, a 12 by 27 party deck up here. It still only weighs 8,000 pounds. You know, so. I mean, it's technically, it's towable. It is. I mean, weight wise, it's easy to tow and put in and out. Um, the trailer that I built with it weighs about 2,000 pounds, so you're at 10,000 for tow capacity. Heck, man, I had little sea rays that were 8,000, 8,500, you know. The, yeah, the mothership was 13,000 Yeah. on the trailer. Right, right. And any, you know, houseboat of any stature, the old Nautiline or, um, God, I can't think the of Gibsons any. The Gibsons or... Names. River Queens, anything like They were all 18,000. Yeah. 16, 17, 18,000. So... Yeah, it's a little bit wide, but I made it so you could pull the side walkways off with just a couple of bolts if you choose to do so. I've never chose to do so. I put it up. Mr. Policeman oh. drives by. They're looking at it going, holy cow, look at that. And they never pull me over. It'll be good. Yeah, we really... So, uh, okay. Yeah, I, I, I bought these oars wait, for wait, the wait. dinghy. Wait, 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 wait. Captain John said we needed a dinghy for the trip. We needed a dinghy. Every captain needs one. a dinghy. Every captain needs a dinghy. <laughs> so we got this dinghy, and he got these beautiful oars for it. Right. And in one video, it is actually showcased. It's beautiful. They were all schlacked up and beautiful, and right. I mean, everything you want your oar to be. Yeah. Eight foot long. <laughs> The whole nine Some yards. dinghies are, you know, more impressive than others, right? <laughs> Absolutely. I, they were beautiful oars, a little stainless steel retainer on them and everything else. Third day out, we lost our dinghy. Brand spanking new. Lake Michigan ate it. Um, what's that company? Boat US or? Um, West Marine. West Marine. Brand new. $900 West Marine dinghy. Uh, inflatable? It. Inflatable? No, it was a hard plastic resin molded. poly. Okay. Poly molded, yeah. yeah. And uh, we had 5 eighths line holding it tied off the back of the boat and the rope broke in the middle so it didn't wear or fray or anything like that either the big wave went right inside the boat and took it down but the houseboat we never knew i didn't feel a tug you didn't feel anything because you were scared shitless and gonna die anyway mm -hmm. sorry i didn't mean to swear no it's okay edit that. yeah yeah i can edit that. edit that so it so and it broke the so, line finally i'm obviously huh? it broke the line yeah when we were going so we lost the dinghy it went off a different direction and I just kept these up here for decoration, and of course over the last two years they've lost their shellac 
but they still make great decorations. They do, and we that's did live through the rest of the trip without a dinghy. Uh, we that's, were okay. that's hard to do. Yeah, we, we made did. it through the whole thing without great. a dinghy. That means you had to always pull up to shore or pull up to a dock or something. I did, and I could pull yeah, this up to shore it. anywhere, we just beach it, it and drive a stake in the ground for a minute, and we could go explore and do whatever. I never had any trouble getting into shallow water or up to shore with this. You coming? Okay. Let's go. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Come on, let's go. Okay, guys, so here's a question that's, that I've been wanting to ask you. So we live in a world with just a thousand types of boats, right? Yep. Why did you choose to build a shanty boat? Aha, this is such an amazing question. Sure One is. the princess will be left out on. So... The shanty boat came before the princess. <laughs> it did, but this comes the big boat-itis. You know, you start with one size boat, you get a little bigger boat, a little bigger boat. I just couldn't afford the boat of the size that I wanted. I really, I, I couldn't afford the boat that I really wanted or to operate a boat of such stature, right? So to get a 40, 50 footer, it takes a lot of money to operate something like that. And, you know, the, the cost of the initial investment as well to go with that. So I started looking at houseboats. When I started looking at houseboats, I had a $20,000 budget that I was going to stick with. And with that $20,000, I started looking at houseboats for twenty grand. The bottoms were rusted out. Um, what's that? The um, River Queens. Steel bottoms. Bottoms were rusted out. This was in 2000? This was 2000. 1999. 1999 when I started to do it. And then they had crust pontoon boats. You could get a crust pontoon boat for twelve grand, which now that I look back, I may have should have bought because they had thirty-inch pontoons in diameter, plus all your controls and everything to get started. But the houses were rotted out on them, and I couldn't figure out how do you fix the house? How do you fix the floor without taking the whole thing apart? And that was just too complicated for my brain to figure out. So then I seen um, uh, another guy who built his own boat and I got under there and I started looking at that now this is the winter I'm crawling through three foot of snow to get underneath this boat and look at this guy's boat who, who built it himself I got under there and he had sea channel going in two different directions every 16 inches or something like that I started looking it just looked complicated as all get out so I went back to the crest house boat and I looked underneath that thing again and I seen these Z bar, Z channel things that go underneath there, and I started looking at that, and I'm like, well, instead of trying to change the whole house, I might as well just build my own boat. That would be, you know, with the money that I have. So I started looking around for pontoons. I found three brand new pontoons, made to order with a transom on the back of one of them, the middle pontoon, and a four foot by 24 inch holding tank for my sewage, black tank, in the middle. And that was the total key right there. I got them for 5000 bucks back in 2000. So I bought them, started from the ground up, strung them all together, squared it up, and started with the house. But make no mistake about it, it ain't easy. Not even from that point. The blood, sweat, and tears that went with it and the problem solving and everything else to make sure everything come together the right way, it was tough. But I was a truck driver. I drove at night, eight hours a night. What else you got to do but think? Hmm. By the way, I never dozed off. For mm -hmm. the three months I was building the mm -hmm. boat, the brain was always turning, mm -hmm. trying to figure out, problem solve, what my move was for the next day to get that thing up and running and ready to float. Mm -hmm. it, was, um, it was a grueling endeavor, 
which at one point I'm looking at it going, man, I got $5,000 in pontoons. I got $3,000 in treated wood lumber and four by eight sheets of uh, treated marine grade plywood to go underneath the house. There was 12 of those. Uh, plus all the uh, deck boards and everything that went with it. And back then we didn't have the computer like we have now. I bought every carriage bolt from Tractor Supply from Cadillac, Michigan down to Grand Rapids to put that thing together. And I'd buy five, ten pounds of carriage bolts and nuts and washers at a time to put that thing all together. So everything's bolted, nut, galvanized, whatever. And, man, it was just, it was tough. There was times when I wanted to quit that I just... What do you do with it? Who's going to buy a half-built boat? How do you get your money back? Did I just waste everything that I invested? And you see that once in a while. You'll go online, yeah. type in houseboat into a marketplace. Yeah. You'll see half half completed boats that people have given up on. Yeah. You know, and you didn't. You took it all the way to no, the end. No, I'm too stupid to quit most of the time. <laughs> That's not the word I'd I use. I know how to get, you know, <laughs> just get her done. I was... So yeah. how, how how long you, you might I might have I can't remember I might have asked you this in the first video but roughly how long did it take you to complete that boat? It took six months. It took three months from the time I started it March April and May, and then I floated it in June to see if it would float and run. And we partied it the rest of that summer, and then the next March April May I did the interior which I completed all the knotty pine. Tongue and groove, refrigerator, all that stuff. Added the helm upstairs. And, uh, yeah, made it a complete vessel at that point instead of, you know, just a shell. So, in all reality, it took six months. One, That's actually pretty quick for a full yeah, build. Yeah, it, it was a full build. That wasn't a start me boat. There was nothing there. All your controls were brand new. Motor, steering, Steering yeah, cables, from the ground up. everything was brand new. Yeah. All the wiring, I mean, it all went together as brand new stuff. Nothing that was um, salvaged from another boat. I did take some seat cushions out of an old camper to make the seat cushions around. And then we had them recovered and mm -hmm. turned into something, you know, nautical mm -hmm. that looked good. Uh, but, yeah, that was it. And then I traded a karaoke machine and CDs. For my refrigerator, which, by the way, I'm super proud of. 20 years, it's still going. Love it. We had it still got one ice time. cooking. Huh? Didn't we have it rebuilt one time? Not no, that, that one. was the RV. That was no. an RV we had. No, the boat's been golden the whole time. That refrigerator, that's been going for the full 20 years. Well, it's 22 years old now, so it's been going 22 years. One Dometic gas-powered refrigerator. So it's pretty cool. Over the years, it's uh, it's evolved, you know. A lot of people say, well, when did you, what happened here, you know. Well, the boat evolves over time. You'll make changes based on your needs. Yeah. We raised five kids on it from the beginning. Yeah. And it had three bedrooms, or two bedrooms and the living space out front. And then we took the wall out between the bedrooms and made one big master bedroom and, you know, changed all that around. So, yeah, it's uh, it's evolved. Yeah, I think that answers my question. Yeah. So, so really, it comes down to you had a budget, and you couldn't quite find a, a turnkey or something close to it for in that price range. So you just decided to do it yourself. Right, right. That stuff that just needed more work than I thought I was capable of doing. I'm not really a repair guy, but from the ground up, that's a little easier than trying to repair somebody else's stuff. You know, because you don't know how they built it. Now I know how I built this boat, by the way. And I think I was telling you earlier, if I got a light or something that burns out, I know exactly where to look to fix whatever it is that goes wrong with the boat. Got it. You know, 22 years later, I look at it, though, and I'm wondering, how, how did I figure that out? But then when you start working on it and you look at it a little bit, it's, memory comes back. You know, well, that was pretty damn good. <laughs> you, put no, your, you put yourself into that boat, every bit of it. Every bit of it. You bet, yeah.
vessel is magnificent and fierce and huge-ish. <laughs> 